tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails, tribal trails. It says, God is calling out of the world a people for his name. That's during this what we call church age or church dispensation. It's this time period where he's calling from Jew and Gentile out of the world a people for his name, a people to be uh, come, become born again, believers in Jesus Christ, and they're a people that God recognizes as one of the three uh, mentioned people groups, beginning with Jew, Gentile, and the Church of God. So we have it there in Scripture that in this time period, God is calling people out of the world. In other words, he's saying, free for all, come. Anyone, anyone can come. And then, uh, when you come to, to Christ, there'll be a change. It'll be God that'll be making the change. And I'm going to read first, no, Second Timothy, chapter three, one to five. As I said a moment ago, it's not evidence on the outside like in nature, but in the lives of people. And the picture is not great, but the picture is there. He said to him, Paul said to Timothy, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, this is the know this also. All right. Perilous times shall come for men, people, shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. All right. So what it's saying is, Toward the end times, people are not going to be followers of the Word of God. They're not going to heed the things that belong to God. There's a time, and we can say, as I read this, yeah, yeah, actually, it's reaping what you sow. Yes, reaping what you sow. All this comes about because of the, for instance, this uh, uh, verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now, if you love yourself only, you think of yourself only, nobody else, not in any way, shape, or form to, to look at them in their misery or uh, helplessness or, or whatever they're going through, hard times and so on, you couldn't care less about that. Well, you must be fitting into this category. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. They only think about themselves. And furthermore, uh, the, in that, what goes along with that, covetous, covetousness. They'll be covetous. That is, they want this or want that more than anything else. It's also for themselves. You know, it's like he loves himself. 
So in coveting, it's for himself. And there are these things that we read in Scripture of how God wants us to be. That also comes in that we grow. We grow from knowing what God wants to the place where we become. And the Bible says that we're followers of Jesus Christ. We become more like Jesus Christ. His character. Uh, I've heard that, you know, different fellow was, was asked about his uh, appearance. Well, he said, you know, I want to look like Jesus Christ. Because he had hair uh, just a little past his shoulders maybe. But there's nothing saying that's what Jesus Christ looked like. Neither is it hinting or implying that in appearance, physical appearance, not that. It's his character that we're looking at here. <clears throat> it is general, generally agreed by good evangelical teachers and preachers that these days that we're living in is the last days before Jesus comes to get us. Bible teachers are saying there's nothing in the way. If he comes now, every scripture has been, well, seemingly fulfilled. I would say, yes, fulfilled. And then Jesus will come. Another way of saying it is, the coming of Jesus Christ is, they use the word, imminent. In other words, anytime. Oh, I can't wait to see Jesus. Just like John talks about him in Revelation. He saw the Father and his angels to the four corners of the earth. He had them gather all the people and brought them to the place where Jesus would be
One of the things I've learned that I haven't seen people two things. Couples praying together and praying that the Lord Jesus himself would come. Those two things. And I, I've been teaching that now, of course. That we're to pray for the Lord Jesus to come. <clears throat> we're taken, we're taken and uh, his being ruler will make all the difference in the world. Now, here it is here that uh, evidence of the last days is something like not happenings on the outward, but among people. One of the first things we find about children, next generation, this generation, or last generation, a generation that has not been taught in the Word of God. The Bible tells us there'll be disobedience to parents. I put my notes here. Not the children's fault. Not necessarily the children's fault. Do you know, people? If children are taught from the start the Word of God, there's a difference. They may not fit into that disobedience part. But the, the scripture definitely tells us in the last days, one of the evidences that these are the last days will be disobedience of children to their parents. But I say, and look, I've seen and I've talked to people on the reserve, on my reserve, other reserves, one of the things that has gone on among these people, uh, among our people, and I've told them, not just here now, but I've told them, if father and mother, uh, let's say has three or four, maybe five children, but instead of spending time in the evenings with their children, just spend some time. It isn't just also full-time teaching all the time. I didn't say that. But the very fact that you're with them, they appreciate. They may not say, come to you and say, I appreciate you staying home. Parents leave their children. Okay, maybe sometimes to a younger, young person, maybe an older person, I don't know. And sometimes they leave them alone. So the children being left alone or left with somebody who's not necessarily a godly person. You know, the children are going to learn different. The children are not going to appreciate if their children, if their parents had been teaching them about obedience because they weren't there. Some university students were taking a survey. One of the questions was there to ask, Okay, I'm finishing this survey. Do you at this time, it was in the evenings, do you know at this time where your children are? The answer was, the children did not know at that time where their parents were. Just the opposite. So, uh, it's not without foundation what I'm saying here, people. This is being uh, a gradual deterioration in a family that children have not been taught. And, well, maybe they were taught at times, but when other things are more important than teaching our, our own children, then they don't, they don't come out with good success. Well, there are Taught that about disobedience, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And then the, uh, about children, yet if they were taught in the word, they have more chance of coming to the Lord Jesus Christ than if they haven't been taught at all. In fact, 
I got some scriptural support. One is in the Old Testament. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, I know this, that when children are starting to be independent, yeah, right about a dozen years or so, they, uh, they have no, if they have nothing to go by, the evil one is the ruler of this world. He'll make sure that those children are fed something from the world from which they will disobey mom and dad. Then, what have they to live for if the word isn't taught? So, Stephen, you've been in Vancouver for a long time, and uh, tell me about, a little bit about your family and where you're from. I moved to Vancouver in 1978 uh, because I was born with a disability called cerebral palsy and there were no jobs, no opportunities for people with special needs and to this day there still isn't. So uh, the best opportunity and the best decisions that were made on my behalf uh, were to move to Vancouver where the opportunities were greater. And um, uh, had I not done, done that without my mother's... Um, input and um, acceptance of that I needed to um, leave the community in order to grow, in order to represent her and be her legacy, and she is mine. And, uh, and so she, she realized after time that uh, she needed to open up her wings and allow, and, uh, allow me to blossom and fly and to become the person I am today and uh, it's because of her and uh, and my gr grandmother played a major role in it too and back in the day we uh, I'm a residential school survivor um, back in the day we were governed by the Indian resident um, the Indian agents and the, the systems that were in play at that time so uh, it was brought to my um, mother's attention that the the Indian agent or the government at the time wanted me to be uh, adopted. They wanted to send me through adoption. But um, uh, my mother thought about it. She said, no, you have, uh, I have to talk to my parents. So she went to talk to her parents and um, they said no. So, and by saying no, they, the, my grandmother said she will help the stories that I've heard. She will help look after me while my mother does the ranching. And my mother was one of the main ranchers of the day and became my, my, my grandparents' cowboy because my, um, my, my, grand, my, my grandmothers and granddad were, getting, were aging. Yeah, good for her, good for her. Um, okay, go so ahead. I play a, my, my grandmother not only plays a key role into who I've become today and why, and because she didn't give up on me, because I had a disability. Yeah. You got some awards. Yeah. Can you share about that? It was the Canadian Caring Governor General Award about six and a half months ago, uh, six and a half years ago. Oh, okay. And... Uh, uh, I was, um, I didn't even know I was going to receive it. Somebody nominated me and um, they... uh, I want to know, why, why did they mm. give you that award? Why would, why did they <laughs> nominate you? I, I would uh, think that they, they, they saw my compassion, they saw how I cared, they, they see how I relate to people and react to people and how people react to me and how um, easily, easily spoken I am and how approachable I am and uh, uh, how I care about people and uh, how I respect them and give them and how they respect me. They don't look at my disability. They look at um, who I am as a person, and I look at them as a person. 
uh, our people in the downtown east side, even in their struggles, they inspire me. And uh, they continue to, the people I think that should have been gone a long time ago are still here. And all they're looking for is acknowledgement, dignity, and someone to say, yes, we love you. You're still a part of humanity and you matter. Yeah, yeah, they do. They matter to each one of us and they matter to God. Yes, they do. Yeah. I'd like you to share about that Bible verse that Jesus said, if you deny me. Well, one of the things that um, the Lord has done so much for me that I don't even realize, we don't even know when he steps in harm's way. We don't even believe him. We don't fear him enough. We need to understand what fear is and what fear is. There's one fear that we fear the Lord because we need to fear the Lord in order to understand him. We don't fear him enough and, uh, and that's where the trouble begins. Yeah. And that's what brought me to be here today is the fear of um, the opportunity to share, but at the same time struggle in denying the Lord. And that's, uh, it's bigger than me. And I don't want to deny someone that's been there for me, someone that's given me the gift of a disability, someone that's given me so many opportunities in, in spite of my disability. Um, Somebody that's, um, somebody that's cared enough for me to uh, be, be the individual who I am today, become the individual I am today, a strong, um, and compassionate, caring, independent. understanding, independent, and uh, uh, loving. It's not too late. It's not too late. You yourself, parents, you come to the Lord. Come to trust in Jesus Christ. Change your ways. God can do great things in your life. God can save you. And young people, I know if they see a difference in you, if they see some love in you, there could be a difference. Make a difference. God bless you good. God be with you. Talk to God about these matters. Make a difference in your life. What kind of memories are you leaving for your children? Will they remember a home that's filled with love? Will those memories include much talk of Jesus? Of his salvation and eternity? What kind of memories are you leaving for your children? Do they ever see their parents bowed in prayer? Will they remember a loving Christian mother? show he cares Are you teaching them God's precious words of wisdom Do they know that from sin's power they can be free When they recall your teaching through your words and actions Each be the one that it should be. What kind of memories are you leaving for your children? Do they ever see their parents bowed in prayer? Will they remember a loving Christian mother? Yeah.
he cares. Do they see that God is very real in your life? Or are other things more precious in your mind? good and kind What kind of memories are you leaving for your children Do they ever see their parents bowed in prayer Will they remember a loving Christian mother